Well, hello everyone and welcome back to uh, another edition of uh, Airbus and what's it doing now? And today we're going to take a look at uh, flight controls, which I promised uh, once we uh, moved on from uh, hydraulics. So a couple of uh, bits of news, uh, first of all, uh, we're up to nearly 70 subscribers, which uh, I'm absolutely um, gobsmacked uh, about, really. This was never meant to be some sort of uh, uh, fantastic uh, YouTube channel. I am definitely not uh, a YouTuber. Um, a lot of that uh, technology is uh, beyond me, quite frankly. Uh, and uh, this is always meant to just sort of help people with their knowledge and understanding and practical application. Uh, and, but to see that uh, subscribers are sort of going up almost daily, um, makes me really happy because obviously you guys are liking it and uh, the, so the, the, the word is going around. Uh, so really, really pleased about that. If this is your uh, first time watching the channel and any of my videos, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, the whole purpose of this um, is to, like I say, expand on your current knowledge of the uh, of the aircraft there is an assumption uh, of uh, a baseline sort of knowledge but what I try and focus on here is practical application of that knowledge what you see what you need to know and uh, improving on that knowledge to help your understanding of the systems uh, overall and sometimes uh, in failure cases uh, so welcome and uh, thanks uh, for joining um, so a couple of other uh, additions uh, you may have noticed that the lighting in here is somewhat brighter. I think the jury's out as to whether or not it's any better, um, but I did promise that I would be trying to improve the lighting from my three spots in the ceiling, which uh, bashed up against their whiteboard here. Um, and I've just bought this newer uh, ring light, which is in the corner there at the moment, uh, kind of shining that way. Um, I've got to get my head around it because I find a, a better way of positioning it so it's kind of more sort of at me. Um, but the problem I've got is if it's if it's any further that way, it shines on the whiteboard and then reflects off it. And then all you see is this big sort of ring uh, in, the, in the middle of the screen. So uh, any ideas, if anybody is more uh, uh, in tune with this sort of stuff uh, and, can, and can help me with it, um, please give me some tips uh, because um, my, the whole idea of this is, is to make this uh, better for you. I've also found 4K on my iPhone. So I've just switched that over to 4K. So hopefully the quality is um, going to be better as well. And I've also got this little widget gadget thing, uh, which enables me to um, start and stop the video remotely rather than my arm coming in and out. So that'll save me a bit of editing. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are screaming at this going, oh my God, this has been around forever. But you know, that's just me, I'm afraid. Just catching up with technology. Um, right, so flight controls then. Um, before we go into this, please can I ask you to review the hydraulics, uh, which is the previous video that I've done. Um, I'll put a link into it uh, at the bottom. Um, and I really recommend that you review that first before coming on to the flight controls because there are many, many overlaps with it. And I will be referring to hydraulics during this briefing. Um, so it's a really good idea for you to go back and uh, review that before uh, watching this um, watching this video. Um, so my intention, as I mentioned in the sort of the pre-brief, um, was to break this up into a number of videos. What I'm hoping to cover here is a uh, system overview. Uh, and then as we get on to flight controls in normal law. It's a really massive subject, this. Um, and like I say, my the purpose of this is just to expand on your knowledge and practical application of it, but it still goes on for quite a while. And I wanna try and keep the videos within uh, 30 minutes. So system overview in this video uh, and um, normal law. So the th topics I'm gonna discuss are the components controls, and the uh, operation. So that is, you know, what you see in the overhead panel, um, the controls that we have in the flight deck, our interaction with them, and the indications you get on the flight deck, such as the PFD. Um, I'm gonna talk a, a little bit about E-Rudder, but not a lot, because I, we're not gonna see that on Neo Aircraft for um, many years yet, because, um, so, so I'm gonna touch on E-Rudder. 
Um, and as far as spoilers are concerned, I know they're part of the flight control system, but ground spoilers... Uh, the different ground spoiler logic, uh, what happens when you're single engine and all that sort of stuff. It, I'm going to leave that as a separate subject. My only reference to spoilers when we're talking about flight controls is roll control, essentially. OK, so that, that's what I'm going to um, uh, stick with. Um, and um, what I'll do up here is I'll also put in uh, a, a brief layout of the of the hydraulic um, layout in there as well, where, where it actually references to flight controls, which it does on uh, on many occasions. Uh, good. Okay, so I think that's pretty much uh, it for flight controls. Then normal law. I took a look at um, protections. Um, the uh, what we'll also see is uh, op operational protections. What you see on the PFD. Then I'll have a look at the uh, indications. What we see. And I'll also look at limitations, load factor limitation protections, um, etc. So we'll come on uh, to that as, on the second part uh, of this uh, video. Um, good. OK, so I think that's just about it in terms of the introduction. I'll rub all this off. I'll press my little magic button here and then I'll uh, you can join me again in a moment uh, when we talk about um, the um, uh, control overview. Okay, guys, and um, so here we're going to have a look at the actual um, components of the system themselves. Um, so j just a reminder, um, the Airbus is uh, electrically um, uh, controlled and hydraulically operated. Each of the control services, um, uh, for the most part, if not exclusively, have two uh, servo jacks per per control surface. The only exception to that is the rudder because it has uh, three hydraulic surfaces, uh, services to it. Uh, but if you have a look for the ailerons, for example, the green and blue, green and blue um, hydraulic services, each one has a servo jack associated with the hydraulic system and um, a um, uh, ELAC um, associated with that, which will control that to hydraulic um, input, which then will control that servo jack. So, yeah, ailerons have got a couple of servo jacks. The spoilers have got a servo jack. The elevators have got two servo jacks. Um, the uh, rudder's got two. The uh, stabilizer's got two, sorry, with the, uh, for the, to control the uh, pitch trim uh, with the green and yellow. And the rudder's got one servo jack per system, uh, which all operate in parallel. We'll come on to that uh, in just a moment. So that's an important thing to remember. Electrically controlled. So this is a fly-by-wire aircraft, as we know. Uh, any inputs that we put into the flight deck go through a transducer. That sends some electrical signals through some um, very fiber optic cables, goes through a, a flight control computer, checks to make sure that the inputs the pilot have put in, whether it be for alpha or whether it be low control, it then decides, sends some information over to the control surface uh, and says, right, I want you to move this much to uh, basically what him up front has asked for. Uh, we'll, we'll let him have it. And so the control surface um, uh, then moves. If you like, it sends it sends an email out to the control services and, and, and then does it. Uh, and there's a little body in between uh, which decides whether or not they can have it. Uh, that's the, basically the way to sum up the Airbus flight control system. Very, very basic. I'm sure if there are any Airbus engineers out there, they'll just think, oh my God, that's far too simplified. Uh, but that's essentially what it does. Um, and we need some computers in order to make this uh, work. And as you can see on here, we've got elevator aileron computers. These are the ELACs. Uh, I'm going to put a, uh, a system diagram on a schematic, which I'll probably put on uh, that side of the screen, straight out the FCOM, which shows you these computers, shows you the inputs, and a couple of other bits and pieces which I want to draw your attention to, because this bit is fundamental to understand before we go on to the other elements of the control services and its components. So elevator aileron controls, um, controls the elevator and the aileron. Uh, you remember from the hydraulic schematic, the priorities um, in terms of the ELAC for the ailerons, that's ELAC 2 will, will, is the primary, and then it's taken over by ELAC 1. Uh, and then we've got the sex. Now, these, these are spoiler uh, and elevator controls. Their primary function is uh, spoilers. And you'll remember from that uh, schematic two double one double three, uh, sex one, two and three will control a spoiler or a pair of spoilers 
uh, on each wing and their secondary function then is um, back up for the elevator control. And then we've got the facts. Now the facts are some clever bits of kit because they are flight augmentation control or in some references you see it as flight augmentation computers. But the control function of it is uh, the rudder, uh, your damping, etc. Um, but it has many, many other functions, including uh, zero fuel weight calculation, CFG calculation, uh, VLS, uh, characteristic speeds. The facts um, are um, quite a busy uh, bit of kit on the uh, aircraft. So um, we're going to cover uh, the other aspects of the facts in later uh, videos. I'm not quite sure where that's going to fit in yet, but we'll cover it a little bit later on. But essentially, the flight implementation computers or controls is going to control the rudder and, uh, and your damping. OK, so just taking your attention back for a minute, back to that schematic, uh, which I mentioned earlier on. Again, if I remember, I'll try and put it back up here. Um, you can see at the top and the bottom of that schematic is the mechanical link. And there's a mechanical link from the rudder pedals and a mechanical link uh, with the trim. Now, mechanical is a clue in the title. This is all to do with mechanical backup, which we'll have a look a little bit later on in the um, in videos two or three uh, later on when we talk about um, a reversion mode reversions. Um, it's important to remember that we need uh, these flight control computers in order to control these surfaces. OK, but. We can still control the aircraft without them. Um, and that's when we talk about mechanical backup a little bit later on. But fundamentally, and this is a question that um, I see or hear asked quite a lot, um, and that if you lose your flight control computers, can you still fly the Airbus? And the answer to that is yes. We can fly in mechanical backup, um, and that's where you'll see on the PFD uh, man pitch trim only. If you if you ever look at that, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Um, but we can fly the aircraft, and the mechanical backup is designed as a temporary means of controlling the aircraft in the event of a complete loss of those flight control computers, or I should probably say a temporary loss of those flight control computers to buy you some time, fly the aeroplane whilst you're trying to bring those computers back online. However, if you lost all three hydraulic systems, then you're not going to be able to control the airplane. And, and that's a really important distinction to make. So you see you've got the mechanical links here between the trim and the um, and the rudder pedals. So in order to control the aircraft in roll, uh, there's a mechanical. Now, I don't know whether or not that is a carbon fibre rod that goes all the way to an actuator through a through a motor which then drives it i don't know i don't know whether that's a separate computer the fcom isn't very clear about it but it doesn't matter just call it some sort of mechanical linkage to a motor that will drive that surface so if you want to pitch the airplane you'd use the trim if you want to roll the aircraft you would use the rudder pedals because a secondary effect of your is roll and that's how you would temporarily fly the airplane but the assumption of course is that you've got hydraulic power if you don't have hydraulic power to that surface then you're you're not going to be able to control the airplane because um, the actuation of those control surfaces relies on hydraulic airbus doesn't consider a triple hydraulic failure as a likely probable realistic scenario so you'll never see it anywhere um it has happened before in an aircraft we remember the sioux city where the guys just had literally over control over the thrust levers that ended pretty horribly but miraculously all at the same time um so that's just an important distinction to make really before uh, we go on you you must have hydraulic power on this aircraft in order to uh, make it fly um so yeah, you'll you'll see the primary effects of those controls and the pr primary uh, means of those uh, flight control computers. And there are mode reversions associated with them. We can lose one or the other, but we still got control over those surfaces. Um, if you lose a flight control computer, um, and it's actually worth maybe going back over the FCOM just to see which hydraulic surfaces cover which, but 
I don't want you to worry about it too much uh, because it's, it's very difficult to remember these things and it's largely unnecessary because the aircraft will tell you. Um, but if you lose a flight control computer associated with a control surface, so let's just say, for example, um, you lost um, uh, 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 an aileron computer. Um, let's just say that you lost um, aileron. Let's just say you lost um, let's say you lost a, a, an ELAC one or or two, for example, um, and you, you have a look at the systems page, what you'll see is a little half amber box uh, around that control, okay? So it's basically saying to you that ELAC2, whether it controls the, the blue, yellow, or green, I can't remember, um, because, it, because it controls that part of the control surface with that hydraulic system, um, even though the hydraulics are available, because the computer's not available, it can't control that element of it. So you'll see a little box around it. So if you're unlucky enough to lose a combination of a flight control computer and a hydraulic system, there is a chance that you're going to lose that control surface. OK, so that's something to bear in mind when you're when you're dealing with failures of con uh, flight control computers and hydraulic computers then you're going to lose that, uh, you'll lose that system. It's quite easy to see when you use a SEC, you, you lose a, uh, it's associated spoiler, uh, but if you lose an aileron control, then um, you'll find that the uh, servo associated with that um, uh, hydraulic system, with that uh, control, is also going to go. So you'll just see like a little amber box around it to tell you that you've lost that system. So it's really important to know that when you're dealing with a combination of flight control and, uh, and hydraulic failures. Um, not much more really to say about that. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward from there on. This is actually underneath us. So this is where the flight control computers actually sit. Um, and it's a huge bank of, uh, of boxes, basically. They look like they just sort of plug in and slot out. Um, uh, and that's, as I say, in the ENA bay, uh, partly at the front of the airplane, and the other part of it uh, is actually against um, like a bulkhead kind of firewall, I guess, uh, to the back of the aircraft, which is in front of the cargo bay uh, bulkhead, um, bulkhead yeah. there. So, okay, uh, so I think that's pretty much it. I've mentioned the servo jacks associated with the control surface. Oh, okay, that's one other thing. Um, if so, so, I mentioned that, let's say for the ones, for example, blue and green. Um, they've got two servo jacks. If you, if one of the servo jacks became was rendered uh, unserviceable, um, whether it be by hydraulic or flight control computer associated with it, the one that's working as obviously drives and works normally. The other um, actuator then works in damping. Okay, so to prevent flutter and that sort of thing. So it's still a hydraulic motor and it, it, a hydraulic actuator. So it's still like a piston. Uh, so it still works sort of up and down. The only uh, exception to that, I believe, is the elevator. Um, and that has um, a, a centering option as well, I believe, to center it with the stab. So that's, um, that's where you need to think about it. Um, oh, and uh, one more thing, which all right, I, I could actually include this when we were talking about mechanical backup, um, just to sort of reinforce what I was saying earlier on about um, mechanical backup. Um, if, if, if you go back to the hydraulics thing, and we, we looked earlier on in, in that video about um, the failure of the green and the yellow uh, hydraulic system. Um, I mentioned earlier on that you need hydraulics in order to control that surface. If you don't have the hydraulics, regardless of the computers that you've got, if it's not, um, if you don't have hydraulic power to service it, then it's not going to work. Now, I know in the hydraulic systems, you've got priority valves, and when the system pressure is low, it will prioritize flight control surfaces, obviously, so you can fly the airplane and basically shut off any high demand. However, if you've got no fluid there at all, that's pretty much gone. You move that control a couple of times and the rest of your fluid is gone. Uh, so green and yellow, for example, and I'll put a little clip of the uh, flight, flight techniques, um, uh, the techniques manual, uh, flight crew techniques manual in here, because there's a nice little snapshot in there of this. Um, and you notice in the green and yellow system, you lose the uh, stabilizer, okay, for trimming. And so in the QRH, uh, in the um, dual hydraulics um, summary pages, 
um, and in the FCOM it mentions uh, and in the techniques manual it mentions configuring flat one flat two flat three then going down the glide path and then selecting the gear down for direct law why is that well because the stabilizer is frozen OK, so you've got the flight control computers working, but there is no green and yellow hydraulic services for that control surface. So it's not going to work. So this just kind of reinforces what I was saying earlier on about um, about needing hydraulics for those surfaces. Um, so what happens is the aircraft is trimming through the elevators. And then uh, once you put the gear down, you're then in direct law and the elevators then as there's no more trimming at that point the elevators are at a set position and that's your new neutral for when you actually move the control services with the side stick what you'll also see on the pfd is say uh, it'll say uh, use man pitch trim because that's what you normally get in direct law well it's an anomaly you can't use man pitch trim because there is no control over the stab anymore because there is no hydraulic services supplying it OK, sorry if I went on a little bit there. I'm sorry that that looks a little bit disjointed. I just remember at the bottom here to add that in to reinforce it. I could have put it in earlier on, but it's just worth reinforcing that point and really understanding the differences between the two. And you need hydraulic services. Um, and I'm also not sure that when we talked about hydraulics, I really um, that I really kind of made that point uh, uh, strong enough uh, in terms of the, the, the effects of losing the green and the yellow. But I'm sure I'm sure you're reasonably familiar with that um, with that anyway. OK, good. All right. So moving on then without waffling, we're now going to have a look at normal law. We're going to have a look at this protections, uh, both uh, high speed, low speed, high alpha. Uh, we'll have a look at um, uh, roll uh, protections as well. G protections, low protections and that sort of thing. So. OK, guys, just a bit of an overview here. The uh, board is how I remember the flight controls and uh, protection modes on the uh, Airbus. I go from the speed tape showing uh, high speed protection VMO, MMO down to VLS, Alpha Prots and uh, Alpha Max, including the Alpha Floor and uh, Toga Lock. Uh, we've also got the G loading protection in clean and in uh, flap configuration. And then we move over to bank angle protection, including the maximum bank angles achieved in high alpha and high speed protection. And similarly uh, in pitch, what the maximum pitch is achievable in clean and flap configuration. And also when we have uh, high alpha protection. So uh, just to give you an oversight on there, this is how I draw it and how I remember it. And it's how I give my briefings on flight controls to trainees. But of course, you can draw it how you want to, obviously, in a way in which uh, you can uh, better remember it. Hope that helps. Um, just as we talk about normal law very quickly, um, we just got to look at a couple of modes in normal law. We've got ground, flight and flare mode. Um, I just talk very briefly uh, about these things before we go on to the, uh, the board presentation. Um, uh, and uh, for those that are coming over from the Boeing, we'll find this particularly interesting as well, because ground flight and flare will mean absolutely nothing to you. Um, ground mode is actually like a Boeing mode. It's conventional. The uh, side stick uh, rudder pedals um, have a direct correlation to the control surface. So um, whilst there's no, um, apart from mechanical backup, whilst, whilst there's no uh, physical communication, uh, the flight control module, if you like, um, allows uh, full uh, deflection so that's why on the ground you do your flight control check you can see that they move fully and freely and you can see that on the sd page that they move to their full extension okay so a direct relationship there's no uh, auto trim um, and as you're trundling down the runway uh, above uh, 70 knots the maximum uh, elevator uh, allowance you'll get will reduce from the full 30 uh, down towards uh, 20 degrees uh, maximum. Um, flight mode, uh, I'll, I'll try and put a little uh, diagram which is down in the FCOM at the bottom here just to give you some example on it. it. Again, it's slightly different to the NEOs and the 2021s, but if you just say that there's a blend, okay, there's a blend when you take off, when you rotate and the, air, and the aircraft leaves the ground between uh, ground mode, which is the direct relationship, remember, uh, to flight mode, where you're now commanding a G loading. Um, and 
uh, that takes a period in pitch. In roll, it's almost immediate. It's like half a second or something crazy. Um, but in pitch, it takes about five seconds, okay? So when we talked about single engine stuff in some one of my other videos, when you're doing engine failure on takeoff, remember, um, you're going from ground to flight. You have to be very careful with that side stick because you know it's blending up to G load. So if you keep that back stick as like ground uh, mode um, kind of application on that side stick as direct stick elevator um, relationship, if you keep that in, at some point you're going to come on G loading with that side stick. So you're going to keep pitching up, and that's where we see people dropping way below their V2 and having to redo their uh, LPC engine failure on takeoff. Um, different, of course, for the go around because you stay in normal law uh, in flight mode. Um, but watch that video uh, to know more about that. So suffice to say, flight mode there is a blend, OK, and it takes uh, about um, five seconds uh, for that to happen. And the roll rate is instantaneous. Uh, the flare mode, um, slightly different. Um, because the Airbus uh, being the, the flight control laws that it has, it needs to, it needs to induce the, 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 the pilot flying to flare the aircraft in a conventional way. And the way it does that is it actually starts pitching down by minus two degrees over eight seconds. And what the pilot has to do then is he has to then pull back on the uh, side stick, just as you would do on a conventional aircraft in order to flare. And you get that feel as if you're flaring the aircraft. So that's the idea behind it. So, um, at 50 feet, the pitch attitude of the aircraft is memorized by the flight control computers. So whatever that attitude is, that's why it's really important at latter stages of your approach to, to not be chasing the, the pappies, okay? Keeping that constant angle, approach angle. So it memorizes that at 50 feet, okay? It also freezes the trim. OK, so, you, so there's no more there's no more trim in order to allow this forward pitching uh, into the flare. So at 50 feet, the trim is frozen. The attitude of the aircraft is remembered. And then at 30 feet, the aircraft induces a minus two degrees pitch input over eight seconds to get the aircraft um, to we'll get the pilot to flare the aircraft, okay? That's the idea behind it, all right? So ground, flight, and flare. Hope you, hope you understand that. Right, let's get into the protections then um, uh, on the board. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look at it then. Uh, if we start over on the left-hand side of the board here and we have a look at the speed tape. Um, this is what we call uh, the high and uh, high speed and uh, high alpha, sometimes referred to high speed, uh, low speed, doesn't really matter. It's, it's actual uh, high uh, alpha protection um, in term, or when you talked about alternate law, you talk about low uh, and high speed stability. Okay, so this is the protection, high speed protection, high alpha, uh, and we'll talk about the abnormal uh, reconfiguration balls uh, later on. So you'll be familiar with the speed tape then. You've got VMO, uh, MMO up at the top and you've got VLS, Alpha Prot and V Alpha Max uh, at the bottom. Uh, important thing to remember about this is that the fax, your flight augmentation computer, so I mentioned that earlier on, I did say that there's the clever bits of kit. These uh, give you the presentation of the speed, okay? Uh, take into account many, many factors. Um, it's the ELACs that do the activation. So the fax sends the information to the ELAC, all right? And that's um, basically how we get the control and the protections, all right? Also, a really interesting thing, you can set what you like in the FCU. You can set 399 knots as a highest speed you can get to, and you can set 100 knots in the FCU as the lowest selectable speed. But as long as the auto thrust is um, in, and that's an important thing to remember, then it won't let you go above uh, VMO, MMO. In fact, the protection is VMO, MMO minus five, as it is with VFE. Um, and the lowest speed that you'll be able to actually achieve, regardless of what's selected, is VLS, lowest selectable. It's a bit of a contradiction in terms there, because you can actually select lower, but it won't let you go below it. 
uh, and that's the idea behind it. Remember that I've, I, I've circled those in green and the auto thrust, come on to more of this in a minute, because they are an auto thrust protection, not a flight control protection, okay? So assuming we've disconnected the auto thrust, we allow the speed to increase to VMO, MMO. Nothing really happens when you enter into it in a transient sort of condition. Um, but as soon as you get to VMO plus four, that's when you'll get the ECAM for the overspeed. And obviously as good, uh, diligent, uh, proficient pilots, you would then uh, perform the overspeed recovery technique. Assuming you didn't do that uh, and you went to VMO plus six, you'll notice on your PFD there on the speed tape, you've got two green dashes. That's where the overspeed protection uh, comes um, uh, is activated, okay? Um, so what's going to happen? Well, you know, assuming the autopilot's in here, it should also stay in. Uh, autopilot doesn't normally come out, it says in the FCOM, again, it depends on the NEO CEO, at VMO plus 15 or VMO plus 16 knots. I'll see if I can give you an extract in that for you. But suffice to say, the aircraft in the recovery is going to apply a slight pitching up uh, with the auto thrust, if it was engaged, it would try and bring uh, the thrust back. The aircraft's going to pitch up to try and help you recover some of that speed and reduce the energy. Brilliant, okay, that's exactly what you want it to do. Question is, can it be overridden? So if the aircraft commences a recovery for you, an overspeed recovery, can you just push forward on the control column and override that protection? Well, yes, you can. And a reason or a situation where you might want to do that is if you were flying at 370 and there was an aircraft coming towards you at 380, what you don't want is the aircraft pitching up and then causing a TCAS. You certainly don't want to crash on another aircraft. So, excuse me, that can be overridden and you can push forward on the side stick to override that protection, okay, to avoid that aircraft. How much can you go? Well, you can shove that all the way forward. Eventually what's going to happen is you're going to reach a, um, a speed at which the airplane won't let you go beyond for structural reasons. Um, uh, I have got the figures for those, but I don't want to quote them because it, it's almost a bit of adverse training, negative training. I don't want people trying to objectively try to get towards that. That would be a bad, big, big mistake. You can see that in the FCOM for your aircraft type, whether it be 1920 or 21 and, uh, Neo, they do differ, but yes, suffice to say, you can push forward, avoid the aircraft, but still, the aircraft won't overstress, uh, even with full forward stick. Eventually, what's going to happen is the flight control system will reduce your side stick input to zero, even with a full forward stick. Uh, and that's uh, that's the idea behind that. So lots of protections there in the overspeed. One thing to note, if the autopilot does disconnect, you won't hear it because the overspeed protection um, takes priority for the autopilot. If the only thing that you may hear or may feel is a click on this on the side stick as it disconnects, but you won't get the audible warning because the overspeed uh, supersedes that. All right. So. Airbus golden rule, know your FMA. That's how the only way you're going to see the oil pipe disconnected. Good. Okay, so that's the high speed side of things. Um, on the low speed side of things, remember if the oil thrust stays in, the lowest we get to is VLS and the aircraft will just hover above there quite nicely. Oh, someone's just at the door, so I'm going to have to pause that and then uh, start again. Okay, I'm back. It was a window cleaner. Uh, right, so on the low speed side again, as long as the auto thrust is engaged, VLS is the lowest that you'll get to. Disconnect the auto thrust, and then the next level we'll come to is alpha prop. That's the top of the amber uh, band um, before we then get to the red uh, dashed amber band, which is the VR for max. So the alpha prop, what does it mean? Well, as it says, the, the, it's on the... It, Including the title, Alpha Prop, Alpha Protection. This is an extra layer of protection before we get to Alpha Max. Here now, if you're flying the aircraft, your side stick goes from G-loading uh, to now uh, Alpha. 
okay because now you're flying the alpha this is particularly useful particularly when you're uh, avoiding gpws or egpws or uh, wind shear this enables you to pull full back on the stick and not stall the airplane you're going to actually achieve maximum alpha i've got a nice little slide in here somewhere which i'll try and put in and it shows you the difference between the trajectory uh, uh, escape maneuver of an airbus and that of a a uh, Boeing. It is striking the difference actually um, and all this whilst maintaining a safe envelope of the aeroplane. It's really quite incredible. Um, I talk more about that in, 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 in terms of pitch in, in just a moment but yeah so now you're flying with Alpha. If you keep pulling back on that side stick eventually what's going to happen is you're going to reach towards Alpha Max and to help you with some performance the auto thrust, now remember this is an auto thrust, circle, 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 um, is going to command toga thrust, okay? And to, again, in assist you with performance uh, so that you um, have more energy and a better recovery of the um, situation that you're in, such as GPWS or wind shear, etc. All right, so if you keep pulling now, again, the side stick's commanding alpha, Alpha floor will come in, you'll see that on your uh, PFD, you'll see it there on your engine instrumentation on the uh, upper DU. Alpha floor will be pulsing. Keep pulling back and keep pulling back, the aircraft is still safe, and then eventually you'll get towards out the Alpha Max. All right, so the aircraft isn't stalled. This is you pulling full back on the back stick for your escape maneuver and avoiding uh, the stalling and a protection above the aerodynamic stall of the aircraft. So, well, a couple of things worthy of note. If you get towards alpha protection without the autopilots in and you release the stick, the aircraft speed will then just settle above alpha. Okay, obviously you will be descending. This is assuming the alpha floor is not engaged at this point. The aircraft will speed will then just settle just at the top of the alpha protection band okay if you keep pulling that's when you'll get the alpha floor once you recover from the high alpha protection you either push the forward stick forward by eight degrees over a certain number of seconds or you come out of the alpha protection band and you're now out of alpha prop the auto thrust will go from alpha floor then towards toga lock, okay? It basically means that you are locked in toga. A key thing to remember here, that is a safety mechanism, but of course you're going to need to get the aircraft out of toga lock. The way to do that is to disconnect the auto thrust, bring the thrust levers back to the climb and put the auto thrust uh, back in, okay? That's going to happen sort of fairly quickly, particularly if you're leveling off uh, back to level flight from a recovery from GPWS or, or wind shear. Uh, so you need to get that activated quite quickly. OK, techniques for that are for another subject. Good. And like I said here, Alpha Max, we're not going to go below Alpha Max because that is a protection for the aircraft uh, in normal law. Yeah. So I like this little diagram here. This is quite useful. Um, we've just got a picture of the aircraft with some flaps out. Apologies, I had a bit of brain fade here. In terms of load factor protection in the clean configuration, it's plus 2.5 Gs minus one. And then in other configurations, it's plus two minus none. Just to uh, add some clarity there. Thank you. This is why when you've got flap out and you're doing flap two, intercepting the glide, uh, with one dot to go you notice and when you select flap two there's a slight balloon um, and the aircraft doesn't really pitch forward to compensate for that and the reason for that is it doesn't like negative g okay um in the neos there is a slight trim compensation for that as you select flap two but anyway the, the laws uh remain exactly the same Okay, and uh, so that's the um, load protection. Uh, so we've covered that, we've covered that. So now we've got the bank angle and pitch protection. So uh, this is a, a diagram that I like to use. So um, we've got all the way towards 67 degrees here. We've got 33 degrees here. So this is where we would normally operate the aircraft within 33 degrees. And we've got a couple of other 45 and 40, which are quite useful when we're talking about high speed and high alpha protection. So from zero degrees up towards 33, we know that once we bank the aircraft, you've got auto trim and you let go of the uh, side stick and the aircraft will remain in that trim, stable condition. 
Um, if you take the aircraft anywhere over 33 degrees up to 67 degrees and then you release the stick, the aircraft will roll back to 33 degrees, but you don't have any auto trim beyond 33. So the aircraft will start to um, uh, drop. Now, as far as Airbus is concerned, really anything beyond 33 degrees is outside of the sort of normal envelope of the aeroplane. And so it's not going to auto trim for you because it doesn't really want you there. All right. But it will roll back towards 33 degrees to give you spiral stability. So, OK, so that's on that side of things. Um, if we go um, towards the high speed and the high alpha, the protections are slightly different. So with <clears throat> high speed protection, so if you are in the overspeed, the maximum bank angle you'll get is 40 degrees. This is all to do with load factor, remember, OK? So these things are working in harmony together. You don't really want big bank angles and high load factor at high speed because you're going to potentially uh, not overstress the aeroplane, but increase the loading on the aircraft. So what will happen in that case, then in the overspeed is uh, once you set to a 40 degrees, that is all you'll be allowed to get to. But once you neutralize the stick, it will actually roll back to zero degrees for you, which is really useful. If you are in high alpha, so let's say you're uh, in alpha prop here with alpha floor activated. You keep pulling back on the stick. Just picture, uh, just roll over left or right. And the maximum bank angle you'll get there is uh, 45 degrees. But there's no return back towards uh, zero again. So this is really quite cool, isn't it? Um, you are, um, you've got um, T3 CAS uh, with the advanced uh, GPWS and you've got some terrain ahead or it says to you avoid terrain. You can actually turn the aircraft full back stick right the way down here towards the Alpha Max and achieve a 45 degree angle of bank in order to uh, move away from that terrain. I think that's incredible. If there are any Boeing uh, guys watching this at the moment, just going, you're not sure about this electric jet nonsense. There's, there's your reason for flying an Airbus. It's the safest airplane you can uh, operate in, in these sort of situations. It really is quite extraordinary. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm an Airbus fan boy, obviously. Um, so that's kind of covers the role. Having a look at the pitch uh, protection now. So here we've got zero degrees, right the way up to plus 30. Um, so that's the highest pitch attitude that the aircraft will allow you to get to in normal law. And then down to minus 15 here in all cases. So um, <clears throat> the maximum you'll get at 30, uh, 30 degrees. Okay, that's in config zero to three. 25 degrees if you're in config four. Why on earth you'd want to be there? But of course, thinking about it, GPWS and wind shear, then there's very good possibility during the approach you might be getting there. But 25 degrees is the maximum that, uh, that it will give you. Interestingly, of course, is that you'll lose your flight directors there as well. That's why when you're doing a, a GPWS recovery or a wind shear recovery, you're pitching up and you'll lose the flight directors, but they will come back to you at 20 degrees. So as soon as you lower the nose again or you start to recover at 20 degrees uh, flight directors, it'll return to you. A couple of things worthy of note here as well. If you're in the low speed, um, high alpha uh, protection, uh, or a high, a low energy state, high alpha states, um, the maximum pitch that you'll get will be reduced. So I said to you config 0 to 3, 30, config 4, 25. If you're in config 0 to 3 in high alpha, it'll actually reduce you down to 25 degrees pitch max. And if you're in config 4, it'll go from 25 down to 20. So yeah, five degrees less. Uh, um, in those configurations if you are in high alpha protection. Oh, it's high pace heavy. Um, on the other side of things though, uh, in all cases, uh, minus 15 is the, um, is the uh, maximum uh, pitch. As you start to dis uh, pitch forward, um, you'll lose your flight directors at minus 13 degrees. And then as you start to recover, you'll get your flight directors back at uh, minus 10. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There is your flight controls. There's your normal law protections. So, um, go and make yourself a cup of tea. Watch it again if you want. Take what notes you want from it. Uh, please put any uh, suggestions in the comments below. Uh, if you liked it, tell me. Uh, if you didn't like it, equally tell me. But more importantly, tell me why you didn't like it. Um, and if there's anything that I can do to improve uh, these briefings or the content 
Um, like I said, if this is the first time you've tuned in, I hope you like the video. Please subscribe because then you get to see anything else that I do. And it also gives me an indication of the uptake on the videos. Um, do share it with your mates as well um, if you think that they might benefit from it. Um, and I thank you very much for watching. Thanks for bearing with me. And the next video will be Alternate Law, uh, the protections or lack of protections that we get with it, direct law, and then we have a look at uh, mechanical backup. Thanks very much for watching.